Hi, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to it. It is April 15th of 2024. I'm Nate Eaton. This is Courtroom Insider. Hang on. Buckle up. We have a lot to discuss tonight. For those of you who thought this would be a repeat of Lori Vallow's trial, today quickly proved that's not the case. Uh, new evidence brought in today, new video recordings brought in today. Um, uh, it, it was it was a day, and we have a lot to discuss. So thank you for being here tonight. If you are tuning in, please let us know where you're watching from. And if you have any questions, I appreciate all of you who send in questions, uh, and, and I hope that we can answer as many as we can. It is Monday. It's a beautiful day in Boise. I'm looking out the window. The sun's out. A little windy, a little chilly, but not too bad. Uh, we have a lot to discuss to tonight. Chad Daybell, I won't be coming back. Those are the words he told his daughter moments before being driven to the Fremont County Jail, the last seconds as a free man, unless, of course, he is found innocent, found not guilty, then, of course, he will be free again. Otherwise, it was the last conversation he had with a family member on the quote-unquote outside world before being taken into custody. We're going to play the video or some of the video tonight and let you decide. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you were following earlier today. We have a big show, as I said. Four witnesses took the stand today. Things got moving and they had uh, interesting things to say. The Lori and Chad jailhouse phone call. Many of you have heard it. Many of you don't know what I'm talking about because you are new to this case. Don't worry. We'll give you the background and we'll play it for you here. And the cop car video of Chad Daybell in the backseat of a police car talking with his daughter. Many of you have said, I've, I've seen in the comments, why do they give him so much time to talk to her? That was, I've never seen anything like this. I'll give you my theory, my thoughts in just a minute on that. And some photos of Chad and Lori less than three weeks after Tammy Daybell died, holding hands, going into Hobby Lobby and enjoying a nice burrito or taco or enchilada at Cafe Rio. I like the salads. Uh, Tammy's medical records were also discussed today. We'll go through those. And we will remember J.J., Tylee, and Tammy, an announcement about a celebration of life coming up that you are invited to participate in. And if you can't make it to Idaho, we'll have it for you live. And your questions answered. So full show tonight, a lot to talk about, and I want to get straight to it. So on Friday, we didn't have court. On Thursday, the last witness was Detective Hermosillo. And I went through last night some of the witnesses that I thought might be on the stand this week. I still think there's a chance some of them might show up. But we um, started today with a short last-minute hearing that literally happened as we were standing in line to get in the courtroom. Those of you who were here this morning know that I'll, – I'll kind of explain the process. We wait outside till it's 8 o'clock. We go inside through security. We go up to the fourth floor where we go get into a line where we're given our ticket. My ticket today, our tickets today were pink. Here you go. Um, with the date stamped. And after we get those tickets, we get in another line where we wait in that line until we can go in the courtroom to get our seat. As we were waiting in that other line, the trial court administrator came out and said that they were holding a last minute hearing and that they weren't going to open the doors to the courtroom, but we could watch it online. And so I, I did as best I could to pull it up on my computer. And basically, you remember last week, John Pryor brought up the fact that Alex Cox tasered Joseph Ryan, Lori Vallow's third husband, back in 2007. The prosecution argued that that has nothing to do with this case and shouldn't be brought in. John Pryor argued differently. Ultimately, the judge set, uh, ruled on behalf of the prosecution. So John Pryor can no longer reference that incident where Joseph Ryan was tasered by Alex Cox back in 2007. Obviously, Pryor was trying to build the case that, or so it appeared he was trying to build the case that because they didn't know Lori at the time, but Lori didn't know Chad at the time, it was, um, you know, Lori had issues with her previous husband. Um, after that, we went into the courtroom, and the first person called to the stand was Vinnie Vince Kayakamanu. 
and he is the chief deputy for the Madison County Sheriff's Office, but for the majority of this investigation, he's worked for the Fremont County Sheriff's Office. So when Sheriff Ball became the sheriff in Madison County, he picked Chief Deputy Kaya Kamanu as the um, chief deputy, so he moved over. Part of his responsibilities in the jail are to listen to jailhouse recordings. And um, that's he, he talked a little bit about that. Here's, by the way, some pictures of the witnesses. This is Vince Kayakamanu there on your left. The second witness we had today was Eric Wheeler with Rexburg Police. We'll talk about his testimony. The third witness was Joe Powell of the uh, Fremont County Sheriff's Office and then Nicole Heideman of the FBI. My apologies to Nicole and all of you watching. I did not have a better quality photo other than her on the stand today. We, I did have a sketch from last year, but because I used photos for everybody else, we had these photos in our archives and I was able to find them through public sources. So we didn't, I couldn't find one of Nicole, but those are the four witnesses who took the stand today. So again, we're starting with Vince. He gets up there and he talks about the day that the police went over to serve that warrant on uh, June 9th of 2020 when they discovered the kids in the backyard. He talked about Chad's movements that morning, how he went to sit in the car and look over his shoulder as they were digging through the front yard or the backyard. And then he talked about the phone call that Lori made to Chad in jail, from the jail, from the sheriff's office uh, there in Madison County. And so I want to play it for you. I realize some of you have heard it before, but I want you to listen to it in the context that let's say you're a juror and you're hearing this call. What are you thinking? What's going through your mind? And um, listen to the concern or I guess lack of concern, you could say, in either Chad or Lori's voices. So here's the call. This is a call from and paid for by Lori. An inmate at Madison County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Thank you for using Telmate. No. Are you okay? No, they're searching. Mark, no, maybe. 
Okay, so that is the call. I apologize for the rough audio. We're going to uh, download the, I believe the audio today in court was much better. That was from when they played it during Lori's trial. So I'm going to try to download that when we're done here and you can go back and listen to it. But that's when Chad's on the phone with Lori and they're searching his yard and he knows likely that something's up. And so he tries to get a hold of Lori. Lori calls him. And notice how she says they're searching the house. He says, no, they're searching the yard, the property. And she says, okay, well, what would you like me to do? Can I, what can I do for you? And he says, pray basically. And then she says, okay, um, you want me to tr tr call you again later? And he says, okay, but basically get a hold of your attorney, Mark Means. As far as we know, that's their last call together, Chad and Lori's. It's, it, they, they were not allowed, they're still not, supposed to communicate with each other. I mean, the judge hasn't specifically said no, but when they were in separate jails, inmates are not allowed to communicate with each other. And um, I, I have it on good authority that Lori has not spoken with Chad in some time. The attorneys did try to arrange a meeting back before Lori's trial between with Chad and Lori to maybe, I guess, can have one convince the other to maybe take a plea agreement. But I don't think that that went anywhere. So I, I have been in court where they've both been there. And during a break, their attorneys kind of walked away and they did look at each other and whisper or kind of make eyes. But it was not an in-depth conversation. So that's the last conversation conversation that they had with each other. Uh, Vince Kayakamanu then testified that Chad, so he made the call to Lori or Lori and him talked. And then he went across Kitty Corner to his daughter's home where he stayed for an hour to 90 minutes and then he got in his car and he took off down the street and that's when the police followed him and pulled him over and told him that there were remains found on his property and took him into custody so the next witness who was up was eric wheeler he works for rexburg police his assignment that morning he explained was to work road patrol he was to keep the public out of the area he was to make sure that you know only those that entered the scene were supposed to enter he kept his eyes on Chad Daybell, and he also testified, as did Detective Hermosillo the other day, that when Chad got in his car, he kept looking over his shoulder toward the area where they were digging, especially toward the tree where J.J.'s body was found first. Um, after Chad left his daughter's home, so Kitty Corner... Detective Wheeler testified that he left at a high rate of speed. He accelerated out of there. And that was right when they found JJ's body. So he was watching the police there from his driveway, from the inside of his car, talking to Lori. He goes across the street, hangs out at his daughter's house inside the home. When they find JJ's body, he leaves. The police then go and arrest him. They take him into custody. They put him in the back seat of Eric Wheeler's car. Now... Um, this is where it gets interesting. This is where Emma, his daughter, uh, Chad Daybell's daughter, I'm just going to find the right spot here, is able, the police allow her to go up to talk to him and share kind of a, a moment with her dad before he's taken to jail. I saw a lot of people online saying, why did they, why did they let her do that? They shouldn't have. He was, they just found a body on his property or she shouldn't have that right. No one else would have had that right. Well, I don't, I don't know what the protocols are in that situation, but they now have an hour, over an hour video of Chad in the back seat. And a lot of that is a conversation he had with his daughter that today was admitted as evidence. So there was probably some thinking there as to, okay, maybe he will talk. He's not talking to us. He's lawyered up. But if he gets his daughter there and we have a camera on, maybe they'll say some stuff. 
And sure enough, they said some stuff. And I don't know if I'll play this whole thing. It's like the, what they played in court today was around 22 minutes. Uh, Rocky Wixom, the deputy prosecutor for Fremont County, admitted this into evidence, played it, and then would occasionally stop as Detective Wheeler explained what was happening. Again, the remains of J.J. have just been found in that backyard. How would you talk to your dad if they found a body in the yard and you had the chance to talk to him? And what would you talk about? On the other hand, what if you are Chad Daybell and they found a body on your property and your child comes over to talk to you? What are you going to talk about? This was the conversation that they had in the backseat of that police car. I, I, I don't know how much I'll play. I might dip in here and there. And I don't know if I'll play the whole thing because you can go on and watch it. But why don't we just uh, play a little bit here? Continue to see for a while, Your Honor. Chased you down and then they came back. Ron. Ron. Just concerning the car. Huh? I know they. Oh, okay. What's that? Oh, just about the car. Oh, we'll take care of the car. We're going to take is it. Is she able to we'll, get it? She, yeah, you can get that. We may have to go through the car. We're arrested in it. Right. The things we got to do. But then she can she have her bananas and her... I gave them her food. <laughs> we'll try to get the car before it's for you. You can eat it. <laughs> so, Eric... So, chat... I'll like just dip in wallet. here. Chad is going through his wallet with Emma right, right, right now. Going through different it's credit cards. It's right here. That's the view. I don't see. Can I look through it? Just sure. There's going to get marked. Uh, no, no. Is there anything that you're going to need in that? Well, she'll be running my finances, I suppose. So. That has a little money on it. You could. Okay. Just, so these are credit cards, so you're good if she just takes them. Yeah. Correct. Um, in the middle drawer on the left side in Mark's room, there's about $9,000 in two white envelopes. Okay. $9,000. In two white envelopes in the middle drawer of Mark's bedroom. So keep track of everything that's talked about thus far. That he asks for his wallet. He tells his daughter that they've got nine thousand dollars in cash. I know many of you have said, How did he get nine hundred thousand or nine thousand dollars in cash? Remember, Tammy Daybell had a life insurance policy that that's why Chad is on trial right now, allegedly for grand theft and insurance fraud. So he's telling Emma where she can find this money when he's gone. We'll continue. Um, so get that. Yeah, so we'll talk more about car payments and stuff, but you have that password. I do. I believe the Hawaiian That's this one. first Hawaiian bank, if you use that same password for this account, it's Chad Abel. Um, that's what else he did. Noticed he said he set up an account in Hawaii, the first Hawaiian bank. The producer there. So he and Lori set up an account when they were over there. This, uh, apparently. There's nothing on it. It's like six dollars. That has to go away. So this, okay, in that same drawer. You can grab it. Is a piece of this that would fit in here, and it's got the company card, company business card. And so just make sure you get that. Um, and this is all in Mark's room? Yeah, I put that in there. There's a like a pamphlet with. A guy is sitting in a car. It's for the Wells Fargo Auto Loan. That's the loan that they keep going on. Yeah. And so that we'll talk about 
So this has, if you go to Telmate, this is the card that's used. Okay. And so all you really do, you could probably just sign in as chad.davel or start your own. I have an account that I've been talking with Lori on. Okay. But you could use this card. Money. Yeah. And to her if needed. Okay. So, yeah, she'll need to still have commissary money. Usually puts 30 a week in there. So, and Okay. Pause right there. So Chad says he puts $30 a week on Lori's commissary. And he tells his daughter she'll still need that. And he tries to tell her his login for the Telmate system. Emma says she already has an account because she's been talking to Lori. So there is that communication there that Emma has had with Lori. I'll continue. You can probably talk to her too. Okay. I'm trying to... I love you so much. Cooperate with them as much as you feel. You know I mean? I'm stopping at 107.58, Your Honor. Detective, based on your knowledge, at this point that day in the search, had law enforcement asked for any cooperation from Emma? I can't testify to that because I don't know the extent of that. Fair enough. Then narrowing it just to you, had you asked her to do anything or asked for any kind of cooperation from her? No. Thank you. They've been kind to us today. I texted uh, John Cryer, so he has my number. He said thank you. Okay. A lot of the company stuff that pays for the house should be this auto pay still out of that um, company account. Hey. I left 5000 in there. Okay. If you need some, come find me. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions you have? I think, well, it sounds like you're not going to be out. I'm right. <laughs> so I think I'm going to, my landlord texted me just to feel bad for me. I think I'm going to come over here. That's what I needed you to say, because, yeah, you and Joe. Stopping at 10904, Detective Wheeler, I just want to reiterate, we just heard that comment about he's not likely going to be out. At that point in time, you had not formally put him under arrest. Is that right? Aside from placing him in handcuffs and detaining him, no. But you didn't advise him of potential charges or anything like that at that no. point? No. And as far as you know, had any other law enforcement advised him of any specific charges that he may be facing? Not that I'm aware of, no. Thank you. And whatever Mark wants to do, <laughs> he should stay with either you or Mark. Don't be careful. I will, Dad. Don't take care of me. Don't take care of you the best you can. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so keep paying the mortgage out of the company. Oh, no. no, you can probably set it up, though. Okay. Um, I'm trying to, it's a Wells Fargo in that same pamphlet. The password, I'll look, but, but I've had a lot of success with mom stuff just saying, Will you help me? My mom <laughs> died. I'm pretty sure. Will you help me? My dad's in jail. I'm the same. But... It should be paid through July 1st. Okay. And I think the car is paid through July 15th. So you shouldn't have any bills to worry about. Um, yeah, I, I'm i not coming back. So all that stuff that's in the baby room is Lori's and mine. The suitcases you'll see in the box. Just put it in the garage, I guess, after. 
store and see what's happening. You, you get He says, I'm not coming back, so all the suitcases and stuff, just store it. It's in the baby room, and you can use the mattress upstairs. I, I mean, what do you think about this, this conversation? Remember that feet away from them, they're digging up two children in the yard, and there's all this talk of, the mortgage is paid through July 1st. You can check this account, that account. Uh, I, I don't have much to say. I, 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 I don't know how you describe the call or the, the, the conversation there in person. Um, obviously, his daughter is distraught and, and I don't want to make fun of her in any way. I don't I'm not here to judge her in any way. I'm, I'm sure that there was so much going through their minds at that time. And 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 we know Chad Daybell's attorney, John Pryor, has said that Chad's at least three of his kids will take the stand. I imagine Emma will be one of them. And then maybe we'll get some clarification as far as her thoughts then versus now. But. Yeah. All right. I'll keep playing. There's the. Yeah, you can take that mattress from upstairs, I guess. Do what you want. Put the books back on the shelf. <laughs> We're going to make it through. I, I'm glad we can talk. I'm glad they let you come over. Yeah. He started crying as we sent him home. Do you want to talk to him? And he's like, Hannah, he said he's just over there. It's like, oh, that changes things. So you probably saw us out there. Yeah, I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Things will slow down for you guys to get left alone. And, but yeah, they'll let you move out of there. You just get over here. You get gosh, well, I <laughs> still feel better. I'd be moving too. That's what the spirit was telling me, but I didn't know how it all. I felt like I needed to learn more. Hmm. And now I get it. <laughs> So, yeah, this is essentially your house, and we'll talk to John Pryor about the financial arrangement, but you should be fine for a while. I think long enough to get on our feet. I have a lot in that account with the other attorney, so that will take care of me for a while. And maybe we just do a refinance on the house or a home equity loan. Does it, I don't think it's going to break us. I think that might be an option. Uh, there. I might need to authorize putting you on the um, mortgage. Account with you? Yeah. Just probably leave Joe off it. Yeah. Yeah, keep me on it with you. And Do you have accounts like that when you're in jail? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is the part you get to that there's no one else in the house. Well, actually, Spring Creek Book Company's office, so you can. We'll manage it that way. We'll find a lot more. Uh, and you have an idea, you can send things through Amazon to the jail? Yeah. So, like, I couldn't send you a package, but Amazon, if I ordered it through there, it could get to you. Yeah. I'll only do that as you ask for stuff. Lori would know the Amazon account. I'll talk to her. Yeah. Because I have, like, $265 or so in there as gift certificates. So don't pay. Yeah, I won't. We'll get it figured out. It's like Cholo and Love of Five. <laughs> James and her loves Elena and Chuck at iCloud.com, I believe is the that's where they I don't know what they're gonna, what they're gonna do with the computers. You could probably 
It wasn't part of the search warrant. Are they, do you know, are they leaving the computers? Well, they were in my bag. They were in the car. They'll probably hold on to those and try to get them out. Okay, but things that are currently in the house will likely be left. I don't know what's been taken out of there. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> when we clear from here, whatever's in there. It, it'll be left, okay. I talked to them and told them the bedrooms and did not mess it up. And they didn't seem like they were going to loom at all at all. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I get Garth and Beth moved. <laughs> and you guys come over here. It'll work out. It's all in the Lord's name. Thank you so It'll work out. It's all in the Lord's hands. Um, I think that's all I'll play from the conversation. That's about 60% of what was played in court today. So if you want to hear the rest of it, go to our YouTube channel and play it. Um, oh, I do want to play this one part. So let me just play this one part. Notice what Chad does here at this point in the video, which was pointed out today in court. Um, there's a jet, there's a, there's a, behind him in the car, there's like a grate where they keep the inmates. But watch, watch what he does here. Letting me speak with him. Just, yes. Just when that cellmate wants I'm available to talk. We can talk. So, thank you. Love you. Now, stopping at 121.16, for the record, I'm going to advance to 121.39. thirty six. Detective Wheeler, I just invite you to watch carefully what uh, Chad does, and I'm going to stop and let you explain any significance to that. Stopping at 121.47. Detective, um... So obviously he was looking over his shoulder as they were digging up his yard. Again, it will be fascinating. Hopefully Emma takes the stand and she can explain that. Remember, this was nearly four years ago. And uh, I understand a lot of you think that it was nervous laughter. Why was he laughing? Sometimes people in really stressful situations, they, they get into management mode of we got to do this, we got to do this, we got to do this. And if he's taking care of all the finances, maybe that's the mode he's in. It's fascinating to me that he remembers how much is on each separate account and the Amazon account and the cash. I mean, you can tell money had been at the top of his mind and these accounts during that time. And remember, as far as we know, he wasn't working. Like he was running his publishing company and selling books, but we've never heard about like another job. Tammy was the one who supported the family. Like, regularly on a regular basis and once she passed away he cashed out her life insurance policy and Lori didn't have a job he was able to go over to Hawaii for some time and come back and and move all over the place with her so doesn't it it makes you wonder how long this would have gone on because eventually the money the money goes away and then what then then is somebody else disappeared who has a life insurance policy I don't know just my just my thought. So again, I'll, I'll stop the call, the conversation there. If you haven't seen it, go watch the whole thing. It's, it's, it's something else. Um, but John Pryor, the defense attorney, of course, has his turn to stand up and cross-examine the lieutenant, lieutenant or the detective, Detective Wheeler, who was on the stand. And um, he doesn't necessarily address the video, but he does address the fact that Detective Wheeler said that Chad quickly left Emma's house and he gets talking about the speed limit in front of the house on that road. It is a highway. It's about 50, 50 miles an hour. So he was arguing that maybe he was just trying to accelerate quickly to, you know, get up to the speed limit. 
Uh, but here's a little bit of what John Pryor asked Detective Wheeler. And this is where I'm kind of confused. Um, and, and please, you know, educate me a little bit. So you said that Mr. Daybell was in Emma's house, his daughter's house, for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. And while he was in the house, you didn't see him try to run away or flee or do anything like that, right? Correct. He didn't have any knowledge of anything going on out on his property other than there were multiple police officers out there, right? I can't testify to that. I don't know what he could see from that yeah. home. Well, as a patrol officer, you understand, and as a sergeant, you understand that when someone is stopped for a traffic ticket, there's a certain amount of anxiety with people when that happens to them. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And would you agree then that if there are 30 police officers, 30 plus police officers showing up at your property and looking all over your property outside, not inside, but outside, would that tend to think that maybe you're a little curious about what's going on on your property? It could. And that doesn't mean that you're guilty of anything. That doesn't mean you have any knowledge. What that means is you're curious about why are there 30 officers wandering around my property? Wouldn't you agree with that? That could be the case. Okay, thank you. So then when Mr. Daybell left Emma's house, it's your testimony that he sped off. Is that what your testimony was? I believe it was. It appeared that he was speeding. It appeared he was speeding. Okay. So he doesn't have any knowledge about what's going on on the property at that point, right? No, I don't know that. Okay. He, does, he, he hasn't been told by anybody from the law enforcement agency that he... Uh, um, that they found something on his property. Is that fair? Not that I was aware of. Okay. And then in your testimony, he and, and maybe he wasn't speeding, maybe he was going fast. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. So he wasn't racing off then, correct? He accelerated quicker than... Okay. And the, the speed limit on Salem Highway, and I've been on there a couple of times, is about 50 miles an hour. Starts slow, but when you get right on Salem Highway, it's a 50 mile an hour road. Council's testifying. Okay, I'll ask him, Judge Instead. Hold on. Again, when there's an objection, I don't want an immediate argument back. I want a moment to rule, and that objection is overruled. Okay. So you can re-ask, and the officer can answer if he knows, knowing he's a law enforcement officer in okay. the area. Do you have knowledge of what the speed limit is on Salem Highway in front of Mr. Daybell's house? 50 miles an hour. Okay, so 50 miles an hour. So if you're pulling out of a driveway and... Emma's, Emma's, where she used to live, is right on Salem Highway, right? Correct. So it wouldn't be unusual for someone to pull into traffic and start accelerating into going uh, down the road, right? No. Okay. All right. So, so many of you have said and commented, why, why does John Pryor ask this? Or why does he do this? Or doesn't he listen? Remember, his job is to try to weaken the witness and the testimony as much as he can, to try to create as much doubt or uncertainty in the minds of those jurors. So is it true that maybe if you were pulling out on a 50 mile an hour road, you would accelerate quickly? Yeah, of course. Um, is it true that maybe when a cop pulls you over, your heart starts to beat a little quicker? Yeah, absolutely. You're a little nervous. Um, I mean, I've been pulled over a time or two, and uh, yeah, I feel that way. So he's trying to build that argument that, yeah, there was a little bit of of anxiety in, in Chad Daybell's life. Now, 30 cops searching the property and finding dead kids. I don't know how far you want to go with that, but it is there. I do want to say uh, there's been some confusion, too, about why was Chad telling Emma about where to move in and whatnot and prior mentioned where they used to live. The night, I believe it was the night the police finally left Chad's property. They were there for two days, maybe three days. After all of the remains of the children were recovered and they closed down the crime scene and everything was back to normal, Emma and her husband moved into Chad Daybell's house. And I know this because we got call after call after call from people who were in the area saying, what is going on at Chad Daybell's house? They're moving furniture in and furniture out. And we found out that she moved into that home as far as we know they still are living there and um we've tried to interview them and they have expressed they don't they don't want to talk okay so um 
Pryor had some more questions for Detective Wheeler, wrapped up his testimony. The next testimony was uh, Lieutenant Joe Powell. He works with the Fremont County Sheriff's Office. He testified that he got involved in the case when they got a call from Arizona, end of October, I believe it was Halloween, that they needed uh, help finding a Jeep that was used in connection to an attempted murder in Arizona. Powell got a hold of Rexburg. They found the Jeep. They started surveilling the Jeep. And they found Chad and Lori. And they knew that Chad's wife had only been dead for 17 days. And one afternoon, I believe it was November the 1st of 2019, they, he and his colleague, followed Chad and Lori from, Saint, from Rexburg to Idaho Falls. And they showed these pictures. I'm sorry, these are not the best photos uh, because I took them from the screen in the courtroom. But on this side of your screen, whoops, right here, this photo, there's Chad and Lori holding hands walking into Hobby Lobby in Idaho Falls. After they spent some time at Hobby Lobby, the detectives did not go into Hobby Lobby. They went over here to Cafe Rio. And they enjoyed a meal together. Now, um... I was going to check on this, and I'm checking right now. November 1st, on 2019, was a Friday. It was not Taco Tuesday at Cafe Rio. But if it was, they probably could have gotten a taco and a drink for $1.99. So they went to Cafe Rio. They went to Hobby Lobby. And then the detectives stopped following them. It was late, but they did have eyes on them, and they did take these photos, which... Hopefully one day we'll have clearer images of those. The uh, Joe Powell was asked about Tammy Daybell's medical records. And he did show them. We saw, um, well, first of all, we saw her death certificate. And then we saw a medical record from, I believe it was uh, Seasons Medical. And then another medical record. And she was on Tramadol. She had apparent, Tammy had apparently had a fall in the driveway a, a few weeks prior and hurt her arm and um fluoxetine did i say that right it's an antidepressant but other than that she had some anemia 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 um i apologize for if i said that wrong uh, but other than that she was in good health um so we learned about her exhumation that Powell got a warrant to have her body exhumed because he had learned about the death of Charles Vallow, the missing kids. He went and got a warrant. He had to coordinate with the state of Utah because Tammy Daybell was buried in Utah. And then he walked through um, some of the photos of them exhuming. Now, I'm going to show you some of these. There was an autopsy photo of Tammy Daybell shown today in court. I'm not going to show you that tonight. Uh, but this is what... Um, just a warning for you there. there no warning. I'm, you're not going to see anything graphic here tonight. But this is this is the process by which Tammy Daybell's body was exhumed. You will hear in a minute that Pryor made a very big deal over the fact that her children were not consulted about this. None of her family members were in Utah or none of her kids. And this happened quick. It happened in a day. She was out of the ground, put back in the ground within a few hours. Lieutenant, can you please just explain to the jury what, what are we looking at? The backhoe getting ready to start digging the grave out. Okay. And this is Ms. Daybell's grave? Yes. And and where is this again? Spring Hill, Utah. Now I call your attention to what's been marked as 37B. What's that? The backhoe digging, digging the grave. 37C. Them lifting the cement vault out of the grave. 37D. The cement vault. 37E. The lid be the lid taken off the cement vault in the casket. 37F. The inside of the cement vault. And I'll stop there. In the course of your observation of the this part of the exhumation, did you see any tampering? No. What did you look at? The edges and then the, you've seen all the roses and stuff still on top of the casket. Okay. Did you examine the casket as well? Yes. Did you see any indication of tampering there? No. 
Okay, that was uh, Detep- or Deputy Prosecutor Rocky Wixom test, uh, questioning Joe Powell. And he made the point that that grave site was not tampered with. The, the vault with the casket was placed in, everything was sealed. They then loaded that casket into a hearse. It was driven to the medical examiner's office. The, de- the detectives followed. They did the autopsy. They, they observed the autopsy, and then they followed the casket back to the cemetery where they then buried Tammy Daybell again. So here is how Pryor cross-examined this witness. Again, just a snippet, but you can get an idea of where Pryor was going. Or that. No. So you looked at some medical records and said she has anemia and she's on Prozac. And you looked at Officer Greenell's report, right? Yes. But you didn't look at any death certificate? No. Did you read Brenda Dye's report? No, I did not. Did you read Officer Greenell's report? Yes, I did. Okay. So when you when it so when you took into consideration of why you dug up Tammy Daybell, and by the way, just before we get there. Tammy Daybell's children were never notified that you were digging their mother out of the ground, were you? No, there was not. Yeah. So her own children were not advised that. Overruled. So her own family were never advised that you're digging their mother out of the ground without without letting them know in any shape, form, or or, or opportunity to respond. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so Pryor was trying to hammer home that by asking Pal, you didn't, you didn't read the coroner's report before you had Tammy exhumed? No, you didn't consult with the doctor. You didn't do this, 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 this. Pal said no. Um, and then, of course, he made the point that Tammy's children were not consulted, that their mother was going to be exhumed. John Pryor repeatedly said that Tammy was dug out of the ground dug out of the ground um it sounded a little crass i guess you could say rather than exhumed but again i don't don't know what his motivation was for using that terminology um from here he had joe's pal read from a report that a deputy prepared when the deputy responded to chad daybell's house the morning that tammy died Remember, the deputy went first, the coroner came over, they took a report, Chad Daybell insisted that an autopsy not be done on his wife, and then they uh, declared that she died of natural causes, and that's what went on the original death certificate. So, listen to what Chad says to the deputy that Pryor then had Lieutenant Pal Reed today in court. Chad said Tamara didn't have any serious medical conditions. She was taking fluoxetine for depression, but did not have any other prescriptions. Chad said the last time she was at the doctor was approximately two months ago when she had fallen in the driveway and injured her arm. The doctor had given her steroid shots and she was not having further issues. Chad said she had been feeling sick with something like a cold lately and that she would have gone to the doctor today. Chad said... She has low blood pressure and faints occasionally. Chad said that she has been going through menopause and also has been having aches and back pain for approximately two weeks and that she was going to visit the chiropractor soon. Chad said she didn't go to the doctor often because she didn't like doctors. And and you were aware of that based on the research of her medical records that Tammy Daybell didn't like to go to the doctor, did she? Yeah. Right. And you were aware that Tammy Daybell would use herbal medicine and oils and other medications in lieu of going to the doctor to try to try to cure herself in other ways, untraditional ways, right? That's what the report said, yes. Right. So instead of going to the doctor for fainting spells and for for these other things that were going on, she would take supplements and do things like that, right? Yes. Okay. And then I'll go back down. And the next one talks about Chad showing all of the -the over-the-counter medications she takes. He said she's taken approximately 10 
10 bottles on the tablet every morning that she takes to help her. Okay. And then read the last line where it says most. In that lab, that paragraph I just read where the last sentence says most of the, of what was most of what was in the cupboard. Oh, well, Mr. Pryor, you turn that sideways. Oh, so you can't sorry. That's that makes it tough. Doesn't it? I was okay. trying to pull one on you. Apparently <laughs> go ahead. Most of what was in the cupboard was essential oils and natural remedies and some pain medications. Okay. So it, it looks like the list below talks about uh, the Prozac, acetaminophen, ibuprofen, vi whatever vitality extracts are. But at the very bottom, it says supplement, right? Yes. And what is that supplement for? A supplement for bruising and sore muscles. So for treating bruising and sore muscles. Did you have any history that uh, Tammy Daybell had a history of easily bruising? I didn't see any, no. Did you see anything that suggested that Tammy Daybell had bruises on her body uh, at the time she passed away? Yes, there was some. Yeah, and you're aware that those bruises were old bruises, right? I don't recall. Okay. And if, doc if, if Brenda Dye put in her report that they were old bruises, uh, you would have no reason to dispute that, right? Uh, yeah, I have no reason to okay. dispute Okay, so Brenda Dye, remember, is the coroner. Remember how the medical examiner during Lori's trial testified that Tammy Daybell had bruises on her upper arms in the manner that she was held down when she died of asphyxiation. We can see where John Pryor is going here. He's setting it up so that the jurors already have in their minds that Tammy Daybell bruises easy and she had bruises on her body when she died. So kind of getting ahead of what evidence could come out later on if she was held down. Um, Pryor continued to question Powell, and then he was eventually released from the stand. The final witness for today was Nicole Heidemann. She came on about the last hour or so. It got a little technical because she is the FBI tactical specialist. She, her job was to check phone numbers and connections in the case. She went on to say that all of these people, Alex, Chad, and Lori, had multiple numbers associated with them, but really each of them only had, th when I say multiple, I mean like nine numbers associated with them. But really they just had three, each had three main numbers. And they had each other in each other's phones under different names, like Lori had Chad in her phone under Bishop Shumway. And... There, she went through this just kind of toward toward the, the top or toward the end of the day by saying how these were connected. And, and we didn't get too, too deep into her testimony. We will hear much more from her tomorrow about all of these different phones and about the connections they had with each other. Nicole Heidemann testified at Chad Daybell or at Lori Vallow's trial last year. So if you want to go get a sneak peek at what she might say tomorrow, you can go see. But she did the same sort of analysis on all of the cell phones back then uh, and, and in this case. And then that was it. That was that was today. There was a lot today. I, I could talk another hour about everything. I'm not going to. You can go watch it. We're splitting up each of the people who testify. If you just want to watch their testimony, you can go watch that so you don't have to scroll through or watch the whole day. So you can go to YouTube and watch Detective Hermesio's testimony from the other day. We have Lieutenant Wheeler up. We have Lieutenant uh, Kaya Kamanu, Chief Deputy. And then shortly tonight, we'll get up um, Joe Powell's testimony. So if you just want to watch those, you can. Um, I do want to touch on one other thing. I know so many of you are asking, after our afternoon break, uh, we came back in the courtroom and the judge said that there was an issue with somebody in the gallery saying, having an, something with the jury. I don't know all the details of that. From what I understand, somebody was removed from the courtroom, at least one person, maybe two, uh, because they didn't rise when the jury came in or, or something like that. I, I don't know anything more, and the judge did not elaborate. What I do know is that um, if you come to court, please don't talk because <laughs> we're the, the, every day it seems as if the judge is getting more and more upset with 
things that are happening in the gallery. So um, I just try not to whisper, <laughs> please, uh, because you can tell the judge is, is some days irritated and the bailiffs are. And it seems like every day they're just today that we walked in and the whole side of the courtroom was blocked off. We had to sit on the other side and they gradually opened it up because too many people were talking last week and the jurors could hear that. And so, um, you know, if I sit by you and I don't talk to you, don't be offended. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to do my work. But that is what that's that's what we know about the jury issue. So I, I don't know. You remember last year there was a an author who was kicked out of the courtroom because uh, Jim Archibald believed that she took a photo of Lori Vallow and uh, Judge Boyce was not having it. And he clearly um, wants to keep this trial in order. And because it's being live streamed. Uh, he, you know, he can say, well, go watch it online. Uh, here's what we know about tomorrow. There will be a hearing outside of the presence of the jury at one o'clock. Do you remember I talked last week about the person, the attorney in Idaho who filed, filed a motion to intervene the Friday before jury selection? And um, I believe his name was Terry something. He filed a motion to intervene and have the trial delayed, have the trial continued. And his name, I'm just finding the story right now. Okay, the judge sealed the motion, so we don't know much. But Terry Ratliff, a lawyer who practices in Mountain Home, filed the motion through I-Court. We found out about it at East Idaho News because our attorney was CC'd on it. Like she got a copy of it because she was part of the case when we fought for cameras last year. So he filed a motion full of typos from what it appears, a motion to intervene and continue the trial in these proceedings. Uh, Boyce wrote both the state and the defense have raised concerns about the impropriety of this attempt to intervene procedurally and substantially. Additionally, both the state and the defense have requested the court immediately seal the document or alternatively strike it from the case. Well, there's going to be a hearing on that tomorrow. And I believe it will be live streamed. And I thought it was originally scheduled for 3.30, but the judge said today that tomorrow at 1, lunch will be longer for the jurors and there will be a hearing at 1 outside of the presence of the jury, so it could be this matter. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what he has to say. I don't foresee the judge suddenly saying, okay, we're going to continue the trial now that we're, you know, three, four days into it. And we've had these witnesses and we have to get a new jury. I, I don't think much will happen with this motion. But we will continue tomorrow with uh, Heidemann on the stand, FBI Nicole Heidemann, and also more witnesses are expected to take the stand. Before we get to your questions, I know there are so many, I want you to um, subscribe if you haven't to our, to our YouTube and you can follow us and um, keep up to date with all of this information right here. And as we remember, JJ and Tylee and Tammy, there will be a vigil or a celebration of life, I should say, just announced today for JJ and Tylee. This will be in Idaho Falls on the 27th of April, so two weeks from last Saturday at the Colonial Theater in Idaho Falls. Visitation will be from 11 to 1 and a service will be from 1 to 2. I know you are from all over the world. If you cannot make it, we will live stream it on eastidahonews.com. And um, I wanted to let you aware of that so that you can make, if you do want to come to Idaho Falls, you can go to that. Again, the visitation. Larry and Kay Woodcock are uh, putting this on and they are doing, um, they're welcoming everyone to come as long as the as long as there's enough seats, first come, first serve. I believe that that theater holds around a thousand people and um, you can come and participate or you can watch live. So um, the, the Woodcocks wanted to do this because they uh, feel that right kind of in the middle of the trial is an appropriate time to do it so that maybe the focus can kind of change, you know, from Chad to them. Um, I do want to share also, we've talked a lot today about Tammy and when she was exhumed. This was a photo of Tammy's gravesite. I, I put this on Twitter last April at the start of Lori's trial. 
you can see it's cleared off. Somebody sent this to me and it was a snowy day. And, and this is, uh, I imagine how we should remember her resting site, not as it being exhumed and dug up, but uh, where her final resting place is. So tonight we remember Tammy and JJ and Tylee. All right. Whew. I think we, we got, we didn't get it all. We got a lot. Let me do some shout outs. Amy Sunderland is watching from Idaho Falls. Hi, Amy. Tracy Miller and your daughter. I hope you got our gift card. I don't, I, if thank you. If you send a gift card, Tracy, I'm, I'm not sure. But thank you. If you send it to our newsroom, I have not been into our newsroom for a few weeks. So I'll check with our team there. Elizabeth Alfin, it's your birthday. You have a great birthday. And I had my birthday yesterday. So you must be an Aries. And that means you're cool. Carlene Gao from Melbourne, Australia. And Danielle Rose from High Peak, UK. Thank you all very much for watching. Oh, we have some more. Emery Blanchard, Nancy Elias. Brandy Heerig, Melanie Walker, Megan or Megan Nelson, Jeanette Elginger, Maria Cunningham, Amy Dodd, Janet Smith, Beverly Parker, and Martha Christie. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for watching. And if I did not say your name, I still appreciate you watching. Thank you. I tell people all the time when they say they watch, I said, thank you. It's job security. If no one watched, I'd be working down at Arby's or something. Okay, let's get to your questions. Lauren has... Has Chad ever gone through or been made to have any psychological testing of any kind? Lauren, I don't believe so. His mental facilities, faculties, status has never been an issue in this trial. It's only been Lori and there has been no reference at all that mental illness will be used in his defense in either the mitigation uh, session of this trial or in the guilty in a uh, not guilty phase. So I don't believe so. Jody, you need to write a book. Will you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone would read it, Jody. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe one day. I think there's a lot. I'd love to do like a behind the scenes kind of tell all. There's a lot of, a lot happening behind the scenes. Um, so maybe, maybe a, a really in-depth podcast. Would you all listen to a podcast? I, I don't know. Uh, Nanny Jan, thank you though for that compliment. When did Chad's kids learn of his marriage to Lori? We don't know the specifics on that, but we do know that within a couple of weeks of them getting married, they were all down at Knott's Berry Farm in California with Lori there on the trip. And obviously from the call played today, or that, not the call, the visit, the visit there in that police car, uh, Emma had talked to Lori. So um, we, I don't know though exactly when they, when they learned of his marriage. Was the photo of Tammy meant to be shown? Jenny asks. I don't know. I, I wonder that myself. Judge Boyce last week was so particular about the photos of the kids not being shown. They weren't even shown to anybody in the courtroom or anybody um, at in it just the jury, basically. They weren't shown on the live stream. And today, we were kind of going through these photos bit by bit by bit, and then boom, the one of Tammy's body autopsy is shown. And, um, and then the judge had a sidebar after, and we didn't see the photo again. So uh, it may have been, a, it may have just been slipped in there. It's not like the judge stopped everything and said, wait, hold up, but good question. The judge said no one can distract the jurors. Did something happen? Uh, I, as I said earlier, I'm, I don't know all the details on that. I do know that like, I'm even sometimes nervous to look at the jurors just in case we're not, you can't even smile at them. They're, they tell us you keep a poker face with everybody up there. You can't even like wink, say hello, nothing. It's like straight faced from both sides. So um, I just pray I don't run into a juror somewhere. If I do, I'm going to turn around and walk away. Are Melanie and David still married? Meg, Meg asks. I'm assuming you mean Melanie Gibb and David Warwick. I believe that they are. Remind us if Alex was cremated, Dennis says. Um, yes, I believe he was. And I, I, the other day somebody asked if there was a memorial service for him. There was. It was short, and it was uh, just close family and friends, from what I'm told. Are Chad's kids subpoenaed and therefore cannot watch the trial and see evidence presented about their dad? Good question, Colin. 
I, I believe all of the children are subpoenaed. And if that is the case, if they have a subpoena, they're not supposed to watch any of the witness testimony. They're not supposed to watch the live stream. They're not supposed to look anything up about it. They're not supposed to watch this or any other programming. So yeah, they, they're not supposed to. Some people do. Um, I do want to address, apparently there's some, some people heard $90,000 in that envelope versus 9,000. I heard $9,000 in the video clip. Um, I can go back and listen. That's what also what I heard in court. If I misspoke earlier and said 90, that was my bad, uh, but it was 9,000. I couldn't see super well, but can you tell me if there was something odd about Tammy's hands? Jenny asks. I, I don't believe so, Jenny. I just think that it may have been the way that they were placed when they buried her. Have the Daybell kids ever expressed sadness over the children being in the backyard? Um, I, they may have during their interview with 48 hours on CBS a few years ago. Um, but I think it was more in more, the feeling was more, they were defending their father. Are the jurors reacting to prior Ada says, no, I, I mean, honestly, I, I have not seen a reaction, um, really from prior the jurors to prior or the prosecutors. I, I haven't seen much of a reaction from either side, so I'm not sure. RK, can married inmates have conjugal visits? Nope. Not here in Idaho. And it would take, it would take a, you probably have to go all the way up to the warden for that to happen. The, like the warden of the, the whole prison system. What was Chad's reaction when the video of he and Emma were played, Parker asked? Um, well, you can watch his reaction. It was the same reaction he's had almost the entire trial. He sat there stone face and he kind of looks and looks at the jury and looks at the screen. He didn't show much of a reaction. And if you want to see it, go watch it because he there's a camera on him. Wasn't it nice too today? They they fixed the cameras. They changed the cameras and the audio, especially the audio. So if you emailed the court the other day complaining, please email them back and thank them for adding in that fourth camera and for fixing the audio because you know last week was tough to hear and this week it's so much better. So that's great. Okay, I think we got all of our questions in. Remember, you can follow me all over the place. I'm on Facebook. There's my Instagram, n.eaton, my ex, Nate News Now, and East Idaho News on YouTube. I know many of you are watching on my family channel, Meetin' the Eatons. You can also follow along there. Thank you for those who watch on that channel too. Um, that's just I just kind of put that up as a side, I guess. Just honestly, is more of a like history for me to look back on when I when I have all those videos on there. Um, you know what? My wife's calling. I'm going to bring her on. You want to you want to talk to Erica? She doesn't know I'm doing this. Hey, honey, I'm live right now. Do you want to say anything to the audience? No, I just need to know what card we bought our rug on so I can return it. <laughs> okay. Well, there we go. We have some family business. Um, I think it was the Capital One. But we're live right now. Can I call you in a few minutes? You bet. Love Goodbye, you. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. Well, look, there we are talking about that. Okay, I better go. I got to call my wife. She's home with the kids. Join me tomorrow. Uh, 8.15 is when the live stream will start for the trial. If you want to watch day four, we'll be back here tomorrow night. Courtroom Insider. All your questions answered. Go back and watch today if you're into the story because there was a lot that happened there. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good night. I'm Nate Eaton. See you tomorrow.